He's just a, he's just a guy in the room. I get the comfy <laughs> swivelly chair because nice, that's the host nice. thing. Okay. It's the host chair. <laughs> but I'm the host. All right. You're like my Ed McMahon. All right? <laughs> I'd be nothing without Ed. <laughs> it's true. Okay, so um, we are live hot in five, four, Hey everybody, Eric here with BizTalk, a procurement comm brand. Uh, once again, we have a most awesome guest on the show, Joanne Newborn, founder of Newborn Evolutions, right? So with an S, Evolutions or no. Evolution? Evolution. Newborn <laughs> Evolution. See, that's what you're here for, correct my <laughs> mistakes. Um, Joanne, um, I, I think it's, it's, it's like, I read your your, uh, I read on your website, I thought one of the things I was like, Jungian, like, <laughs> then I started actually having to go back yeah. and I'm like, oh man, I know this stuff. Let me go read about this some more. And I was like, okay, this is really interesting. Um, so before we jump into that, yeah. you know, uh, tell us a little bit about who you are, your business, what you do, and then we'll just take the conversation from there. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my company is Newborn Evolution. I've been in business for five years. And what we do is we do leadership consulting and coaching and training in organizations all over the world. I have to really credit the pandemic for that because um, it changed the landscape of coaching, right? You can, uh, sometimes I'm working with one company and I'm, I have people from five different countries all over the world. So before that though, I had an 18 year career in the wine and spirits business. So where we are is so perfect. That's just <laughs> yeah. such a lead. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it <Yeah>. was. <laughs> I think the pandemic shifted a lot of people. People did a lot of pivoting. A lot of career changes. I think at the pandemic, we also got the adoption and acceptance that you can have a virtual conversation yeah. across your, the internet. Because prior to that, people were like, what? No, just meet me. Yeah. Right? So I think that's definitely changed. So making the leap from 18 years in wine spirits into coaching. So where, how's that transition move? Like, Well, you kind of hit the nail on the head because you said, oh, I noticed this Jungian theory in psychology. So I started taking classes for fun, just for fun. I really loved it. I was fascinated by it. Um, it goes back thousands of years. It really ties into things from mythology. And to me, I started to feel like all the answers that we question things about were in this work. So I just started taking all these classes and my teachers kept saying to me every year, do you want to get your coaching certification? And I kept saying, no, I have an awesome career. I am good. I just like taking these classes. And after about three years, they finally convinced me. I, I actually ran out of classes to take with them. So I said, okay, I'll get my coaching certification. But I, I really do think that they saw something in me that I couldn't see because the second I, I got that certification. I started Newborn Evolution just as a passion project. I still had no intention of leaving my career in the wine and spirits business. And then after a few years, it just grew and grew, like the fun I was having. I, there weren't a lot of stakes for me, right? So I threw a lot of spaghetti against the wall. I said, oh, let me try this, let me try that. I'm gonna do group coaching, I'm gonna do one-on-one -on -one coaching, I'm gonna do this or that. And then I just realized this is what I wanna be doing. And not because I, just because I wanted to, but because I was really helping people. Yeah. And I, I wanted to have this little ripple effect and it started, the ripple started to get much bigger. Bigger, right, so you started growing and it started basically, again, from a love, right? Yeah. I think a lot of entrepreneurs start, I think there's only sort of two ways. They either see a, a, you know, a path, a purely, you know, this is, I can make good money at it because I'm good at this, and they, they plow through, or I'm really passionate about what I'm doing, I wanna make a living at this. 
out of this. I really think that's only kind of like the only two. Yeah. I don't think anybody wakes up and goes, let me try this. I really hate it. <laughs> you know what I mean? A lot of people, a lot of people though, spent their whole careers doing that though. Really? Not because they love it, but because they should, right? They should, right? That's that social stigma. I remember when I was a kid, my grandmother was like my mom figure to me and she came she she escaped Hitler out of Austria and she got it you know, Amazing. just like any immigrant, work, 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 work in the in the new land, right? And she got she ended up working for a bank. And uh, I told her what I wanted to do. As I was young, I was probably sixteen. You know, I wanted to be a business owner, own my own business. And I, I, I valued every bit of advice she gave me and she goes, Get a real job. <laughs> get a real job it was the worst piece of advice grandma ever gave me because that lasted all of a minute yeah like get a real job it's just not in my dna yeah you know um and that was the stigma at the time and it, i think a lot of it still is people are looking for the idea of security you know and, and you need security you got to pay the rent you got to pay the mortgage you got to pay the insurance i think they look for the idea of security i think they they get they sucked into the idea that you have to plant roots in a neighborhood and have a picket fence in a house for the kids. Meanwhile, I forget all the, the hippie kids that grew up traveling all across the country who are now lawyers and doctors. Right. <laughs> so I think that's the stigma that you, I guess, you've encountered. People have faced that for 15, 20 years. It's really sad, actually, because they hang in there and they can't wait to get to retirement. And you've got, what, 30 years plus that someone's in a career that they're miserable in and they're just i should be doing this because of all these different reasons i can't wait to get to retirement well, well, to me that's that's a horrible way to live your life <laughs> six months after you retire you die nice no, seriously i know t yeah so what are some of the things that uh, well before we jump into that really i could pick, probably pick your brain for like two hours <laughs> um and we only got 20 minutes so talk to us about um about your your business like you you said this was a passion project any stumbling blocks along the way that you overcame i have to say no and honestly i coaching for me is a lifestyle like i've had my own coaches since 2014 for different areas that i want to focus on in my life and i said to my coach a couple of months ago but he he said you you must spend some nights like lying awake worrying about things and i said i never have and and that really comes down to trust right really trusting in the choices that you're making and then when you have that level of trust you're really open for what's going to come next so um when i was deciding to leave my corporate career i had told one of my clients my um date that I was leaving and it was really right smack in the middle of the pandemic like we even we didn't have a second wave yet and she said to me well maybe you should just stay there because you know you've got a great salary and um, you know it's fine you can you can just phone it in and um, she said what happens if we have a second wave you know and you leave so uh, I slept on it that night and I called her back the next day and I said no I said, I am leaving on this date because we uh, instill a trust in our mind. And if I back out of this, I'm telling my mind that I don't trust that I can do this. I said, so I'm sticking to this date no matter what happens. And I did, and like I said, this amazing thing happened, like coaching flourished and really opened up and I was able to work all over the world. So. It's really establishing that inner trust with yourself. So how, I mean, that's the biggest issue I think anybody has, even if they have that entrepreneurial spirit and that passion, trust, trusting themselves, trusting the people around them, trusting that they're making the right choices. How do you coach that into somebody? So there's three things in, in my opinion, this is the way I work. Um, one is what is the vision that you have? And is it clear? And it doesn't have to be immediately, but you're always working on clarifying that because that's really your north star of where you're going. The second piece is the business strategy. You have to have a plan. You can't just have a vision, otherwise you might as well just sit on the couch and eat ice cream all day and fantasize, right? What's 
the actual business plan behind the vision and then that third piece is working with the mindset so you will all have imposter syndrome you know we're all gonna have those things but um, the more we can say oh I had this direct experience and that is telling me that this path I'm on is the right path right so instead of setting up for ourselves that this bad thing might happen or that bad thing might happen or I might not have you know enough money coming in that's that's where the plan comes in right you, you set your foundation up and then we can say oh my goodness this great thing just happened that's a direct experience telling me that's the way I have to go and and the other one other piece around that is if you approach it like a scientist in a lab that you're never failing you're just getting feedback of what's the next step you have to take so if I do something and it doesn't work out I don't go oh my god I failed I go oh that's interesting you know being curious about it well maybe I'll do this again but I'll do it in a different way or maybe this doesn't serve me anymore maybe it did four years ago when I had this part of my business but maybe I don't want to do this anymore and the funny thing is the more I go I don't want to do this anymore the more <laughs> those people and those opportunities <laughs> keep coming my way which is actually funny yeah, right. I'm no, like I'm right. trying to let go of you <laughs> Yeah, when you made that leap. it's a good question. How did that, making that leap, what, yeah. what did the cash look like for you? Did you establish clients slowly or was it just like, boom, out of an airplane? No, I don't, I don't want to do that. Like I, <laughs> I definitely need the plan. I, I'm not <laughs> that um, uh, courageous, I think. So I definitely had spent a few years building up my business and then that last stretch when we got shut down for the pandemic, I while well, people were like, oh, what should I watch next on Netflix? I was like jamming on the gas and I was working, you know, all day long for my company and then till 10 o'clock at night with clients. So I was building that up um, before I left and then I had like a secondary plan. So the funny thing was, um, like I never got to a place where I thought about like, oh, do I need to like, collect some kind of unemployment or do I need to tap into my savings or anything like that I just had just kept working and building up and building up and building up so I would say within six months I was in a place where I was really solid for a short period you were collecting two paychecks so uh, yeah but that was happening over time yeah. because once I had started that passion project on the side I I was I was getting clients so I mean um, side hustle is the new black isn't it <laughs> yeah well I mean it's it's every side hustle you know we call it side hustle back 20 years ago 25 years ago if you were an entrepreneur you were jobless you know that was the stigma <laughs> like I'm an entrepreneur oh you don't have a job you know that's what people say I remember that <laughs> yeah I remember that um, so yeah, so you know, planning. I mean, that seems to be the running theme that you would you would say, and I, I, I don't disagree. You'll talk to any professional. It's have a plan. It's have a strategy. It's have something uh, to make your next moves. Um, I want to leap back a little bit to the whole idea of the vision, right? And having a strategy. Um, you know, it's funny because uh, when I launched Black Ink in 2013, what I could say is I saw it to the horizon. I saw it to the horizon. I had a vision. I knew there was a direction, and I knew sort of where I wanted it to get to. I dragged him in with me, kicking and screaming. Um, I literally called him up and said, "Quit whatever you're doing. You're coming." Um, and um, but then when the opportunity arose to start, you know, developing the the government contracting and the small business conferences, I said to him one day, "I said, you know, I sort of I saw it to the horizon with." black ink but like for the first time in my life I could see past the horizon you know what I mean like yeah. for the first time in any venture so so I, I don't know if that's like where that but I think somewhere in there that sets into the the mindset of trusting yourself yeah maybe um, 
don't know what do you think. What is that? Is that something? Do you run into people who can see beyond the end game? Yeah. So um, a lot of times people are afraid to create the vision because maybe they've had this vision their whole lives, and then part unconsciously they think, well, when I reach that goal. I'm not going to have anything else to reach for. Mm. But no, we have to keep resetting the vision. So when you achieve that vision, now you have another vision and another vision and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So you were doing that without putting a name to it, but that's exactly what you did. You're like, I had my vision. And then all of a sudden I saw the next vision and they're not different. It's not like you're ping ponging all over the place. It's like going up a mountain. You're just climbing higher yeah i mean we're using our skill sets yeah you know and I, again I, we spoke with uh dominic and you know I, I said i felt like this is the culmination of the last 20 30 years of all our skill sets are here now like we're finally putting all that stuff even like the stuff in high school i'm going why are we learning this yeah <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? so um tell us a little bit more now talk to us a little bit that, about that and i'm going to say a property Jungian, right it's not yeah, the, yeah. you know it's like i say Jungian, and <laughs> That's everybody okay. I, I saw you cringe a little um <laughs> tell us about like where where does that where does that intersect with small business well all of the theories that i've been talking about really comes into achieving your dreams and to me because i had such a long career in the corporate landscape not only just because of that, I was always really passionate about leadership before I even started studying Jungian psychology because um, I had gotten my MBA from Penn State and when I and I and I went after being out of school for a long time. So I had been in the workforce for a while and I came out of getting my MBA and I felt so idealistic. I thought, oh my goodness, all these problems that are coming up at the companies that I work for, like all the answers are right here. And people just weren't doing these things. And I remember I went um, to work for a wine company and they had, they, they came out of a meeting, the senior leadership, and they said, you know, we're raising our prices on all these brands and the sales team went berserk and they're like, how are we gonna make up these sales? And I was not in a, like a very high level role. And I went to the senior leadership and I said to the, uh, one particular person, I said, have you done the price elasticity of demand to see how much volume you're going to be losing by um, raising the prices so we can see what marketing plans we need to put into place um, to be able to make up for the volume? And the guy just looked at me and he was like, no. <laughs> and like, why are you, you know, asking me this? Like, how dare you? And so I was always really passionate about giving leaders the tools that they need to really lead teams. Like this was the highest salesperson in the company. Mm -hmm. And so I think that combined with the Jungian psychology of the trust and the vision and the universe and paying attention to symbols and symbolism, the two of them combined are, are just, you know, a, a massive explosion of yumminess to me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, okay, so uh, where can we find you online? So uh, my website is newbornleadershipevolution.com. Okay, <laughs> newbornleadershipevolution.com. We'll be yep. throwing that on the screen anyway. Okay. <laughs> newborn like a baby n-e-w-b-o-r-n <laughs> thanks for asking um and then um one more thing before we jump uh i know you you deploy like a web series you have a web series right that you do i've, I've seen it on social <laughs> yeah i don't watch it yeah. i'm sorry no it's okay I, I have to have you on it's called experts unplugged and i just do 15 minute interviews with experts to talk about their area of expertise so I'm um an expert of nothing no that is not <laughs> true at all uh so yeah so that's my series it's on linkedin youtube Instagram, so. Yeah, you know what, and we have our YouTube channel, so we're gonna have to get your show up on our channel. We're launching this series January 10th. Great. This series launches, uh, and we're actually gonna be working on deploying OTT uh, for streaming in our series, but we'll definitely get you on our YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> Great, so we can and do vice versa, we can do something. Right? Yeah. We'll sh you'll interview me, I'll interview, we'll simultaneously <laughs> record it, we'll do something. <laughs> Right, awesome. Well, thank you for being here with us. Thank you and so much. I look forward to having you at the round table. Yeah, and, I can't um, wait. So you guys got it. You got a, there's a psychology and you need to reach out to this young lady <laughs> and get your shit together. We're out. <laughs>
<laughs> you use the one gratuitous <laughs> S word.